ever feel like with IVDD where, um, you know, always one step behind? Oh, totally. Right. Like we're always playing catch up. Yeah. Treating the symptoms. Exactly. But that root cause, mm. the disc degeneration itself. Yeah. It's like a black box. Yeah. You said it. We've got theories, obviously. Sure. But this research we're diving into today. Okay. They're using material science to study these canine intervertebral discs. Now that's interesting. And it feels like a total game changer. Yeah, it's like trading in our old magnifying glass right, for yeah. a high-powered microscope. Exactly. <laughs> Very cool. So for our listener today, yeah. you're already deep in the trenches of vet neurology. Mm -hmm. We're talking maybe even PhD level here. I love it. So we're not holding back. Like, we're going full-on science geek today. Let's do it. Perfect. So this paper. Yeah. Applying the techniques of material science. Okay. They basically said, let's take these tools, mm -hmm. these tools that engineers use okay. to analyze like bridge collapses and stuff right. and point them right at these discs. I love it. And figure out why some of them just go boom. So we're talking FTIR, yes. TEM, uh -huh. AFM. Yep. It's like an imaging Olympics in here. Right. The whole arsenal. Exactly. But the common thread, yeah. the thing that ties it all together is calcium. Calcium, yeah. We know it builds up yeah. in these degenerating discs. Right, have for years. But how it builds up, Okay. that might be the key here. Interesting. And they looked at both extruded and non-extruded disc material. Okay, makes sense. And that's where things get really interesting. All right, I'm hooked. So hit us with the highlights. Okay. What do these fancy analyses reveal? <laughs> well, with FTIR, they found that the extruded disc material Okay often contained crystalline hydroxyapatite. Crystalline hydroxyapatite. Yeah, and that's a much more stable form of calcium phosphate than we might normally see. Interesting. So think of it like this. Okay. You've got your loose gravel versus like a solid concrete. The extruded stuff is like the concrete. Got it. Much more solid, much more stable. So that's in the extruded discs. Right. What about the ones that hadn't ruptured yet? The non-extruded samples, yeah. they mainly showed an amorphous form of calcium phosphate. Okay, so that's more like the loose gravel. Exactly, more like the loose gravel. Interesting. And this finding, yeah. this is what led to their hypothesis. Okay. Could this transition mm. from this loosey-goosey amorphous form to this really tightly bound crystalline form? Right. Could that be a major player in why some of these discs actually extrude? Okay, I see where they're going with this. Yeah. So they're seeing these different forms of calcium through FTIR. Exactly. But did they actually see this transition happening? Yes. In the discs? That's where the TEM comes in. Okay. Transmission electron microscopy. All right, so we're going even deeper here. Oh, yeah, we're going way deeper. Oh. Peering deep into the nanostructure of these discs and... What they saw in those non-extruded samples, even the ones that had some calcium phosphate, yeah. it was mostly amorphous. Okay. With maybe a few like tiny little needle-like crystals spattered around. So just like early stages of maybe some crystal formation? Exactly. Okay. But then you look at the extruded samples. Yeah. Night and day difference. Really? They had this mix of that amorphous stuff okay but also a significant amount of these crystalline needles all clumped together interesting so it's like watching those tiny little needles yeah. aggregate into these larger more problematic crystalline structures fascinating right but hold on yeah this calcium transition is super interesting mm -hmm. but does it actually make the disc stiffer that's the question. Because I thought that's what we thought leads to extrusion. You would think so, right? Right. That's what they thought, too. Okay. That's why they did this uniaxial load compression testing. Okay. They wanted to see, okay, how much force can these discs actually handle? So they're really putting the squeeze on these little discs. Literally putting the squeeze on them. Okay. What'd they find? Here's the head scratcher. Right. The initial results yeah. showed surprisingly similar stiffness profiles really? across many of the samples. So the calcium's changing, but the stiffness isn't necessarily... Yeah, it's throwing a wrench in the works a little bit. That's so interesting. Right. Okay. It could be that stiffness is just one piece of a much larger puzzle. Okay. Or they need to analyze even more samples to really get right. a clearer picture. Makes sense. Yeah. Science is rarely a straight line to the answer. Tell me about it. Okay, so more research needed on that front. Definitely. But they didn't just stop at squeezing these discs. No, they didn't. They also used atomic force microscopy. Ah. <sighs> Yes, the AFM, the AFM. So if Tem is like seeing the disc's blueprint, okay, 
AFM is like running your fingers over its surface. Oh, wow. At the nanoscale, of course. Of course. It's that really high resolution. Incredible resolution. So what secrets did the disk's surface reveal through AFM? Well, it wasn't easy. Oh, really? Prepping these samples for AFM. Right. It was a delicate dance. Right. But their efforts paid off. Okay, good. First of all, they found what looked like collagen fibers. Okay, which makes sense. Right. Collagen's a big part of healthy discs. Exactly. So collagen, check. Oh, so. check. This is where it gets even more interesting. Right. Okay. They found areas with these sharp-edged, yeah. hexagonal-shaped particles. Hexagonal. Hexagonal, yeah. Okay, wait a minute. Ringing a bell? Yeah, doesn't that sound familiar? Yeah, that's our crystalline hydroxyapatite. No way. Making a guest appearance again. So we're seeing evidence of these crystalline structures. I know, it's so cool. With both TEM and AFM. That's like they're corroborating each other's findings. Exactly. It's beautiful. And remember how TEM showed those tiny little needle-like crystals? Yes. AFM, because it's looking at the surface. Right. Was able to pick up on those larger crystalline agglomerates. Yes, those clumps of needles that we were talking about. Wow. Yeah. So are they saying that these crystals might actually be disrupting the collagen fibers? Potentially. As they grow? As they grow, yeah. And that's what's weakening the disc. That's one of the theories. Wow. Yeah, that the collagen might be getting pushed aside oh. or even damaged by these growing crystals. Wow. And that could compromise the structural integrity of the whole disc. It's amazing to think about this all happening. I know, right? At such a microscopic level. It's wild. But we've got one more imaging all-star in the lineup here. Oh, yeah. Scanning electron microscopy. Bring on the seam. The seam. Yes. Tell us what insights did C provide. So CM. Yeah. Really valuable sure. because it gave us kind of the best of both worlds. Okay. Gave us those stunning visuals, but also gave us some elemental analysis. Oh, nice. So they were able to see those really intricate surface features of the disk. All those bumps and valleys created by those crystalline structures. Oh, so it's like Sim is confirming that what they were seeing with those other techniques wasn't just some kind of like artifact of the preparation. Exactly. These crystals are really there. They're really bad. Changing the whole landscape of the disc. Changing the landscape, yeah. Wow. And the elemental analysis that right. kind of sealed the deal. Okay. They found calcium, hmm. phosphorus, right. oxygen, all the right ingredients for hydroxyapatite. Here it is. Even in some of the samples that didn't show really obvious crystallization under FTIR. So even more evidence pointing to this amorphous to crystalline transition. Exactly. Being a key process here. Yeah. But how do we take all of this, right. this incredibly detailed microscopic information, yeah. and actually use it to help dogs with IVDD? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Right. That's the bridge we need to build. Yeah. And I think this research really does give us the blueprints. For starters, we now have a new target to go after. Okay. Right? Can we find a way to prevent or at least slow down yeah. that transition? From amorphous to crystalline calcium phosphate. Exactly. Okay. Because could that be the key? Yeah. to stopping or maybe even reversing wow. disc degeneration. Now, that would be a game changer. That would change everything. No more just masking the pain. Exactly. We'd be talking about actually changing the course of this disease. Disease modification. Yes. It's the holy grail. Exactly. Right. And think about the diagnostic possibilities. Oh my gosh, yeah. If we can find these microscopic changes early, early on, yes. we could intervene. Before they even have symptoms. Before a dog is even limping. Oh, exactly. It's like, yeah. instead of waiting for the bridge to collapse, right. we're spotting those little microfractures exactly. ahead of time and reinforcing the structure. Love that analogy. Yeah. So good. And you know, this study focused on calcium, but it also is really exciting because it highlights how we can use these materials, science techniques, yes. to study IVDD. Absolutely. Who knows what other insights we could gain right. by analyzing these disks. With a totally different lens. Yes, with an engineer's eye. I love it. Like we've been handed this whole new toolbox. A whole new set of tools. And with a little ingenuity, yeah. we can unlock the secrets mm. of this really debilitating condition. I'm excited Me to too. The future is bright. It's a really exciting time to be a veterinary neurologist. Don't agree more. From Vet Neuro Jar. Yeah. Keep those minds inspired. Yes. Hearts light. Absolutely. Tails wagging. <laughs>